Right before we jump into this video, I want to ask you, how do you keep track of all your gear and protect it? Well, I created an app called My Gear Vault, which is the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear and get an insurance quote. It's free. Head on over to MyGearVault.com to download it for iOS and Android. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is the ultimate battle between the current Nikon full frame cameras that are on the market. Now the point of this video is to help you decide which full frame Nikon camera is right for you if you're looking to purchase one. Now keep in mind, I don't have a D750 on the table because that is over four years old at this point. I don't have a DF because that was dumb to begin with. I have the Nikon D5, which is three years old now. All of these other cameras are a year-ish, oh, well, actually, these, <laughs> these other ones at the time of making it, one of them's like three months old and the other's about one month old. So they're under a year old for this, the D850 is a year old, and the D5 is three years old. So what I'm gonna be doing is going through the specs and then from my personal experiences, telling you which one I think is for you, depending on what you like to shoot. Now I do have real world reviews of each and every one of these cameras, so you can go check those out, the links are down below and you can download sample RAW files to determine whether or not you like the quality of those files. So now let's start off by looking at what sensors are inside of these cameras. The Nikon D5 has a 20.8 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. The D850 has a 45.7 megapixel full frame BSI CMOS sensor with no AA filter. The Z7 has a 45.7 megapixel full frame BSI CMOS sensor with no AA filter. Now Nikon tells us that it's not the same sensor that's in the D850, even though it's probably the same sensor just with some little tweaks. And the Nikon Z6 has a 24.5 megapixel full frame BSI CMOS sensor. That's interesting that the one with the least amount of megapixels is the most expensive and the D5. But that's because that thing shoots a ton of frames a second and we'll get to that when we get further into this video. Based on megapixels, which camera is for whom and for what type of shooting? The D5 is an action shooting camera. It's fast, the autofocus is extremely fast and accurate, the D850 is more along the lines for portrait photographers, but it's really a camera that's well-rounded that can do quite a bit. The Z7 is the higher megapixel version of their new mirrorless cameras in the Z series, and is basically the same as the D850. I would use it for the same things, and also video. And the Z6 is really a catch-all. It's really one of those cameras that's gonna give you great quality and great functionality at a very nice price. Now let's move into mounts. The D5 has the F mount. Now that's the same mount that's been available since 1959. So just about every single lens ever made is going to fit on this camera. The same thing can be said for the D850 because it also has an F mount. Now the Z7 is a Z mount. That is the new mount. You can check out the real world review that we've done on this camera to hear more about what the Z mount actually is. But what this camera offers you is the ability to attach the F to Z adapter, which allows you to take the F mount lenses and put them onto this body. And the same thing applies for the Z6. Now that's interesting because I love my D5, but I love the fact that there's going to be newer lenses that will be coming out that will just be for the Z system that are supposedly supposed to be better and sharper and faster edge to edge. Now let's get into the ISO capabilities. The Nikon D5 will give you 100 to 102,400, expandable all the way up to 3.28 million, which uh, is a lot and it's not very good when you get up there. The D850 has 60 64 to 25,600, expandable to 102,400. The Nikon Z7, same exact as the D850. And the Z6 is 100 to 51,200, expandable up to 204,000. 800. Out of all of these cameras out here, in my opinion, the D5 is going to be the best for low light capability. Now keep in mind, it has less megapixels. The less pixels you have, the larger they can be, which means they can gather more light. But of course, that all comes at a price. 
I think the D850 does a fantastic job in lower light situations. It may not be as good as the D5, but it's come a long way since the D800, so I think you are really capable of getting nice low light images if you expose everything properly with something like the D850. The same thing applies with the Z7 because in essence, it's like a D850 just in a mirrorless body. Now keep in mind that the D850 and the Z7 are more of the higher megapixel camera cameras so they have smaller pixels because there's more megapixels in there and that means they generally won't do as well at high ISOs as a lower megapixel camera like the Z6. So the Z6 is really meant for more low light situations, but I think all of these across the board are gonna give you great images in low light. Now let's jump into frames per second. The D5 is gonna give you 12 frames per second in 14-bit uncompressed RAW. The D850 is gonna be seven frames a second, or nine if you add the battery grip with the Nikon D5 battery. The Z7 is gonna give you nine frames a second in 12-bit RAW in high extended mode, and five and a half frames a second in normal high 14-bit RAW, and then the Z6 will give you 12 frames a second in 12-bit RAW, nine frames a second in 14-bit RAW in high extended mode, and 5.5 frames in the normal high mode. Super interesting. You're getting 12 frames a second, albeit at 12-bit in the Z6, and 12 frames a second in the D5. Now, of course, the D5 will blow all of these off the table because it's that good at shooting fast, but it's older technology at this point. It's a DSLR. Mirrorless cameras will surpass the shooting speed, or they already have done it with Sony's A9 that does 20 frames a second. These things are dying and going the way of dinosaurs. I own this. This is my personal camera. This is an expensive camera to have, and to have something like the Z6 kind of shoot the same amount of frames per second, really not as well, but getting close to the functionality that this thing offers really makes you think about which full frame camera that you wanna go with. I wanted to cut in here real quick and let you know that we just released 14 custom Lightroom presets. Check out the different looks you can get quickly by using presets like Black and White Boomify, Aquamarine, Sandlot, Color Boomify, Skittles, and more. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash presets to play with and purchase all 14 of these presets at 40% off for a limited time. Now let's jump back to the video. Focusing points. There's gonna be some major differences between the DSLRs and the mirrorless cameras at this point. The Nikon D5 is 153 focus points with 99 of them cross-type. The D850 borrows a lot from the D5 with 153 points as well as 99 cross-types. The Z7 clocks in with 493 autofocus points that are phase detect, and they also go edge to edge. The Z6 is 273 focusing points that are phase detect AF that also go all the way to the edge. One thing I need to mention that differentiates the mirrorless cameras from the DSLRs in terms of the autofocus is that you have 3D tracking in the D850 and the D5. 3D tracking, people love it for allowing the camera to track fast moving subjects like birds or airplanes, and that means that you can just focus on your composition. They don't have a feature like that that is as good in the Z6 and the Z7, so I find myself in dynamic area autofocus more often than not moving my own focusing points. It's crazy to think that I like the focusing capabilities of the mirrorless cameras for the fact that it allows you to move the focusing points all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, all the way to the left except for one focus box and all the way to the right except for one focus box. The D850, more clumped on the inside of the viewfinder. The D5, more clumped on the inside of the viewfinder. But with that being said, the D5's autofocus is still the best out of all of these cameras here. But its lead gets chipped into because of what the mirrorless cameras can let you do. What I mean by that is the D5's autofocus capability has been tremendous. It's still fantastic and it better be for the price. But the technologies that we're seeing in the mirrorless cameras are starting to give us things that the D5 or any DSLR will never have. All the cameras right here shoot up to 1 8,000th of a second with their mechanical shutters. But 
the Z6 and the Z7 can shoot electronically with their electronic shutters. That means these can shoot silent. The D850 sort of has a silent mode that lets you shoot silent. The D5 actually has a mode that lets you shoot something like two megapixel JPEG silent. It's kind of useless. I've never actually used it. So having the ability to shoot silent, if you ever need to shoot silent and you're looking for a camera to buy, you should look at the Z6 and the Z7 even over these other cameras. Continuing on, let's talk about the buffers and how many frames you can get in a row. The D5 will let you get 100 raw files in a row because it just has a massive buffer and that's the 14-bit uncompressed. You can get 51 raw files in a row with the D850. You can get 18 raw files with the Z7 and you can get 43 raw files a row in the high extended mode in the Z6. And when you shoot it in just the five and a half frames a second mode, you basically aren't out running the buffer. Any way you slice it, you can't go wrong with the buffers in any of these cameras. Moving along to video capabilities. The Nikon D5 will shoot 4K UHD video up to 30 frames a second, but with a 1.5X crop mode. The D850 will shoot full frame 4K with pixel binning, 1080p up to 120 frames a second, but it's only baked in with no sound. The Z7 will do full frame 4K with pixel binning, DX crop 4K, which is oversampled from 5K without pixel binning. It will do 10-bit 422 with N-Log to an external recorder, and it will do 1080p at 120 frames per second with audio or without audio baked in. The Nikon Z6 will do full frame 4K without pixel binning, oversampled from 6K. It will do 10-bit 422 with N-Log to an external recorder with a slight crop, and it will do full frame 120 frames per second 1080p with audio or without audio baked in. Isn't it interesting that the least expensive camera here is going to be the best video recording camera up here. That's right, the Z6 is the best option, especially affordably, if you're looking to jump into the game of shooting video on Nikon side. The Z7 is great as well. So if you were to do portraits, if you were a portrait photographer and you wanted the ability to shoot video, the best option is still the Z7 for you. The D850 is more along the lines if you wanna do portraits and you don't really wanna shoot video, then you may still look at the DSLR. We're shooting this video with a D850 right now. Now, the D5, the video's fine, but it's really not versatile. It's not the best choice up here. The least expensive camera today from Nikon full frame mirrorless is the Z6, and that's the best option for video. Since we're talking about video, let's talk about autofocus. The D5, no autofocus when it comes to video. It's basically a brick. It will just look at you and not focus. It'll be like, you're out of focus. And I'll be like, great, thank you autofocus, you suck. The D850 sort of has a autofocus mode for face priority, but it's, it's useless. And the Z7 and the Z6 have the new AFF modes and tracking focus for video. These are on par with the Canons and the Sonys now. So if you are looking to shoot video and get full-time autofocus, both of these cameras give you that functionality where both of these do not. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. I personally use Squarespace for jaredpolen.com and my online photo portfolio. And if you'd like to get a 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now let's get back to the video. Image stabilization that's built into the body. The D5 doesn't have it. D850 doesn't have it. The Z7 and the Z6 now give you five axis in body stabilization. That is incredible to have, especially if you handhold your video when you're shooting, or if you do handheld shots at slower shutter speeds. The built in five axis stabilization is going to help you tremendously. Just think about it. A lot of the things that I'm talking about in terms of technology are all skewing towards the mirrorless technology being the future and honestly the present. These two cameras, 
They were the greatest of the great on Nikon's side until mirrorless technology started to find its way into the market. I do want to point out that the D850 does have three axis digital stabilization, but that's not something you're going to ever want to use. Optical viewfinders versus electronic viewfinders. What's the difference? I made a video about that. It's linked down below or hit the I button in the top right hand corner. It will take you to a video that explains the differences. But in this case, the D5 has an optical viewfinder. The D850 has an optical viewfinder. The Z6 and the Z7 have electronic viewfinders. You now see exactly what you see. Of course, you always saw what you were gonna see straight through the camera with your optical viewfinders, but with the electronic viewfinders, you see an exact representation of what your exposure is. So if you're overexposed or underexposed, it's showing up visually right in front of you. You can tweak it, you can change it, you can see the changes happening. But even more than that, you can hit the eye buttons on the back of these cameras and see all the menu functions while your eye is up to the camera. You can review images while looking through the camera and you can shoot video while looking through the camera. If you're a video shooter, having that ability far outweighs anything else that these other cameras offer you. There are always pros and cons, and you'll see that in that other video I just talked about. But in my opinion, I want an electronic viewfinder in every one of my cameras. The D5 doesn't have it. I hate going back from a Z6 or a Z7 to one of these optical viewfinders because I miss having the ability to see my exposure. I become a better photographer because I see my exposure right in the camera and I can get it much closer without having to chimp, which is taking a picture and looking at it. So in this case, the electronic viewfinders in the Z6 and the Z7 are better, in my opinion, to have for shooting photos and for shooting video than the D5 and the D850's optical viewfinder. Now let's talk about the screens on the back of these cameras. The Nikon D5 has a 3.2 inch, 2.36 million dot touch screen. Now it doesn't tilt, it doesn't come out, it is flush with the camera. The D850 introduced a 3.2 inch, 2.36 million dot tilting touch screen, meaning it can tilt and fold down in case you ever want to be at a lower angle or hold it up above your heads. Now the Z7 has a 3.2 inch, 2.1 million dot touch screen, and the Z6 has the exact same Thing. I still think that the D5 and the D850 having the more resolution screens looks better, but the 2.1 million dot touchscreens on the back of the Z6 and Z7, they're not far behind at all, and I think have some of the better screens compared to Sony and what Canon offers you. Body features. As you can tell, the D5 has the biggest body of all and is the heaviest camera up here, and it's probably the best built camera sitting right in front of me. Now, it does offer you a built-in grip and also bigger battery, and it has back-illuminated buttons. The D850 has back illuminated buttons. You can get a vertical grip, and if you want to get more battery life, you can get the D5 battery and charger and an adapter to allow you to put that into the D850. The Z7 and the Z6 currently have no options on the market to add a vertical grip. The only thing that's been announced is a battery grip, which would just give you the ability to add extra batteries to this camera. Now that's something I hope they decide to change and find a way to give us a vertical grip with the shutter button and the ability to change our apertures and shutter speeds. But these cameras are light. They feel great in the hands. The D850 and the D5 still feel great in the hands. They're bigger, they're heavier, but as you start to get into the mirrorless world, they're much smaller. For example, the Z6 and the Z7 weigh in both at 1.29 pounds or 585 grams. The D850 is just over two pounds or 915 grams, and the D5 clocks in at 3.11 pounds or 1,415 grams. Grams. So if you're in the market for something lighter, of course the mirrorless cameras are going to be much better. Would you like to take better pictures in only 11 days? Well, if so, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days.
Moving on to the memory card slots. The D5 offers you two XQD card slots. They actually have an option where you could buy a camera with two compact flash card slots, which I would highly recommend you not getting, but at least you have two of the same cards to shoot redundant. The D850 offers you an XQD card and an SD card, which is nice so that you can shoot redundant. The Z7 and the Z6 offer you one memory card slot that is XQD. Though XQDs are super fast and super reliable, can you live with just having one card in the camera? If you shoot weddings and one card fails you, you are SOL. Is it a deal breaker? For some, it is. I'm just making you aware of the fact that that's what it gives you. It gives you one card. If you can't deal with that, then you won't go with these two cameras. I've been using them a lot and knock on wood and knock on foreheads. As of now, I haven't lost a card yet. I can't believe I said that because at some point it could happen. That's why I love having the redundancy of the two cards in these DSLRs. I quickly wanna talk about weatherproofing because the D5 is one of the most robust cameras out there on the market. If you're a photojournalist who's shooting sports or you're shooting outside in the elements and the weather, this camera is gonna hold up the best. The D850 is built very well, highly tested. We've seen the videos that Nikon has put out. This is gonna hold up very well. The Z cameras are a little more dainty. Can they be knocked around as much? I'm not really sure they can be knocked as round as much as compared to the DSLRs. They are also weather sealed to some extent. And Nikon even claims that it's the same as the D850. Which camera is gonna give you the best battery life? Well, it's the Nikon D5 because of the size of the battery that you can put in there. But with that being said, the D850 with the adapter and the extra battery from the D5 can make the D850 shoot a ton of still images and video as well. Now the Z6 and the Z7 offer you USB charging if the camera's off. You're not gonna get as good of a battery life with the mirrorless cameras as you are as the DSLRs. But I'm squeezing out six to seven 700 images on a charge with the same battery that goes inside of the D850 in the Z6 and the Z7s. The most important test is the wind tunnel test. So I will step over here and blow. <laughs> yeah, the D5. The D5 fails the wind tunnel test and the others we don't know because the D5 totally blocked the wind completely. Now the sniff test. Oh yeah. They smell mirrorless. They smell like a house without mirrors. And these smell like a haunted house with lots of mirrors. And finally, the price. The D5, $64.96.95. The D850, $32.96.95. The Z7 with the FTZ adapter is $35.46.95. And the Z6 is $21.46.95 with the adapter. So the question is, which camera is right for you? If you're just getting into the full frame market, you want to shoot stills, you want to shoot video, the Z6 is going to be the most affordable option between all of these cameras. And you can get the F to Z adapter to adapt lenses that you may already have. This is going to be great for sports. It's going to be great for action. You could do portraits, but you can also do great video. The Z7 is going to be great for video as well, but if you're just looking to do video, the Z6 is the better option. This is a great portrait camera. I could shoot concerts with this. I can do anything I want with this Z7. It is a versatile camera as well. The D850 is the camera you go with if you're just looking to do portraits, if you're doing studio work, if you're shooting weddings, if you're not really doing video, this is still a fantastic camera. You just don't have the same functionalities that the mirrorless cameras offer you. So you have to think, are you ready to go mirrorless or are you ready not to go mirrorless? In which case you would stay with a DSLR. And if you're shooting sports, high end, you can afford 6,500 bucks, the D5 you can't go wrong with, but keep in mind that this camera is close to being replaced. I don't think there will be a D5S. I think there will be a D6, which would be the last of the DSLRs on the high-end Nikon side. I hope that they skip the D6 and make a mirrorless D6 version. If they do that, then I will be extremely happy even if it's a really expensive camera. It's very hard to point anybody in the direction of buying a D5 new 
today. If you can get one used or refurbished and you go and shoot sports, I shoot portraits with it, I shoot concerts with it, it's an awesome camera. But at the end of the day, it's a dying breed. It's a DSLR. So as you can tell from this video, I really love the mirrorless technologies. There's always quirks. There's always things that you don't like. But if you're starting out today or you're graduating from any other Nikon camera, I think you won't go wrong with the Z6 or the Z7. If you already own a D850, you may not need to jump into a Z7 at that point unless you need to shoot silent and you want autofocus video. So if you'd like to purchase any of these cameras or any camera gear for that matter, head on over to adorama.com slash fro because when you use that link, it helps us to continue to make videos like this. Let me know which camera you'd like to go with and why down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that is where I'm gonna leave this video. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Fro knows photo.com. See ya.